Hello, I'm Nate, aka B-Tier Mutineer, and today as part of my B-Tier guides, I'm going to take you through a build guide for Zevron from Dragon Age Origins. Zevron is a dual-wielding assassin rogue who can be recruited after you finish one main quest in Origins after Ostagar. Other than Liliana, he is the only other rogue you can recruit, meaning that, sadly, you only have two rogue companions in the whole game. In the vanilla game, Zevran tells some lies about being able to pick locks, but when you recruit him, he doesn't even have the first lockpicking talent unlocked. For that reason, I recommend either having the Zevran the lockpick mod, that ensures Zevran has points in lockpicking, as he should, based on his comments, or you can use a respecialization mod to rearrange his talent points as you see fit. Of course, the Dane's Fixes mod also has a tweak called Follower Scaling, that stops companions from auto-scaling past level 7 when you recruit them. For rogues, I generally do recommend having a respecialization mod because their attributes are kind of all over the place, and that kind of does hurt them the most. If you also use the Dexterity Light Armor mod that I mentioned in my Dragon Age Origins Essential Mods video, then you will likely not want your rogues to waste any points in strength as well, since they will not have any use for it. However, if you don't use that mod, then you will have to put some points in strength, probably up to 20 or 22. Since I want everyone to be able to use this build, I will make sure that it is usable by people who only play the vanilla game, so I will just mention here and there how you can change some things if you do use these mods. Zevron starts out at one level above the Warden, so I recommend that you finish one main quest as soon as possible after finishing Lothering if you want to use Zevron, so that you get him at a lower level and you can customize him to your liking when you level him up. Zevron starts out with Expert Combat Training and Expert Poison Making. Weirdly, the combat training skill isn't at all mentioned on the Dragon Age wiki, but I went to recruit Zevron in-game and he did have 3 ranks in combat training, so I assume that's an oversight. Combat training, of course, is the most useful skill in the game in terms of combat since it unlocks higher tier talent for warriors and rogues, as well as providing some other passive bonuses. Poison making is fine enough, particularly the first rank in the skill since it allows the character to use poisons and grenades of any tier. If you really want to craft higher tier poisons and grenades though, Zevran is clearly your guy since he already has the skill almost maxed out. Beware though that crafting recipes and ingredients are quite expensive and I personally don't recommend bothering with them unless you particularly plan on making a poison or grenade build. Zevran starts out with the assassin specialization, so he also has some talents unlocked from that tree in addition to the rogue and dual weapon trees. From the assassin tree, he starts out with Mark of Death and with Exploit Weakness if he's level 11 when you recruit him. Mark of Death is a great talent as it makes all attacks against a marked target, including spells, do 20% more damage to the target. Exploit Weakness is also really nice. It's a passive bonus that makes the assassin do more damage per backstab based on their cunning score. From the rogue tree, Zevran starts out with Dirty Fighting, Below the Belt, Deadly Strike, then Lethality if he's level 9, and Evasion if he's level 12. He also has Stealth, Stealthy Item Use, and finally Combat Stealth if he's level 10. Dirty Fighting is one of the best abilities in the game, as it very quickly stuns a target, and there is no resistance check to it, meaning that all enemies other than those who are immune to stun will be stunned. Below the Belt is a decent melee talent that does some damage to the target, as well as providing a minus 5 to defense and minus 2 movement speed for 10 seconds, unless the target passes a physical resistance check against the rogue's cunning score. I like using this talent more on archers because they are better with high dexterity, and the damage of Below the Belt increases with dexterity, meaning you can do quite a lot of damage to an enemy with Below the Belt. Otherwise, it's decent. Deadly Strike is a good but perhaps not that great talent, at least in my experience, as it usually doesn't do enough damage to be worth using. It has plus 10 to attack, dealing maximum weapon damage and gaining plus 10 to armor penetration for that particular hit. This sounds good in theory, but you'll usually just do better damage through critical strikes and backstabs and other abilities. Lethality is a super important rogue passive that adds plus 10% melee critical chance as well as making the rogue's cunning score be used as a damage modifier instead of strength if the rogue's cunning is higher. This is great as rogues don't really care about strength but do very much want to increase their cunning score. Evasion is another important passive that offers a plus 20% chance to dodge as well as a plus 20% chance to resist stun, knockdown, and slip effects. Rogues are quite squishy so any way to avoid attacks is much appreciated. Personally, I don't use stealth at all in the game, though if you max it out you can even use it in combat to guarantee that your next attack will be a crit. However, I can't be bothered, and really if you have at least one tank in your party, you shouldn't have any trouble keeping your rogues from being attacked and positioning them to backstab enemies. If you have various ways to CC enemies, even better, 
With Coup de Grace, your rogue can backstab them right from the front. Stealth is one of the reasons why I recommend you re-specialize Zevran, because for most players, stealth probably won't be used very much, and you'll be better off getting some actual combat or utility abilities instead. Moving on, from the dual weapon tree, Zevran starts out with dual weapon training if he's level 8, dual weapon finesse if he's level 13, then dual weapon sweep, flurry, and finally momentum if he's level 7. The passive bonuses in the dual weapon tree are all important. Dual weapon training is a passive that gives an additional 25% attribute bonus with the offhand weapon. Dual weapon finesse is the second passive and gives the character plus 5 attack and defense when using two melee weapons. Dual Weapon Sweep is one of the best damaging abilities in the game, as it does damage in a cone in front of the attacker, so it's an area of effect attack, and it does quite a significant amount of damage too. Flurry is an underwhelming ability to me that does 3 or technically 4 hits. They can crit, so if you have a high crit chance, you could probably do a good amount of damage, but it's still up to chance whether you crit or not, and with regular weapon damage, I don't think it's worth using. Personally, I just use Backstabs, Dual Weapon Sweep, or Riposte instead. However, it does open up the next ability, which is really, really good. Momentum is a sustained ability that increases the character's attack speed when using two weapons. It requires you to have a decent amount of stamina and stamina regeneration, but it's worth it. You can deal damage much faster with this active. I find Zevran's starting abilities to be a bit all over the place. He has dual weapon sweep and flurry, but doesn't get dual weapon training until he's level 8. He gets lots of points in stealth as well as other rogue talents, but he doesn't get any points in lockpicking at all, and not to mention no coup de grace. Seeing as he's an assassin, I'd have really expected Zevran to be built in a way that actually shows off his deadly skills. I'll do my best in this build guide to recommend which abilities to unlock for him as soon as possible after you get him, but just know that his starting abilities aren't very cohesive. In terms of gear, Zevran actually starts out with some decent stuff. He gets a longsword, a crow dagger, and an Antivan longbow in terms of weapons, a leather armor set, and the belt mixed metal rounds. The longsword is basic, and I do recommend you switch it out for a good dagger as soon as you can because rogues do much better with dual daggers instead of a sword and a dagger, and often daggers will have better bonuses for rogues anyway. The crow dagger is a nice starting dagger because it has a bonus of 15% to critical or backstab damage, and you will mostly want Zevran to backstab enemies, so that's good. The longbow I would immediately unequip on Zevran because he doesn't have any talents in archery and making generalist builds in Origins is not something I recommend. Zevran is good at daggers, so daggers are what he will use. The leather armor is obviously nothing special, but it will do just fine until you can get him some better armor pieces. The mixed metal rounds are actually quite nice since they have a plus 2 bonus to dexterity. There aren't that many good belts in the game in my opinion, so this is a perfectly fine option to just keep on Zevran for the rest of the game if you don't want to switch it out or don't have the means to get one of the expensive belts or one of the belts locked behind DLC achievements. Since Zevran is a rogue, he mainly cares about dexterity and cunning. In the community, it's generally thought that dual weapon rogues should focus on cunning, and archer rogues should focus on dexterity, at least this is what I understand from my research. However, Zevran gets high approval bonuses in dexterity, so I have heard some people argue that you should respecialize Zevran into an archer. I don't think that archery fits Zevran's character and backstory, so I personally like to keep him as a dual weapon assassin rogue, but if you really want to take advantage of his dexterity bonuses, that's what other people have recommended. A lot of talents scale with cunning, so I definitely agree that you should mainly focus on cunning as the main attribute, with dexterity as a secondary attribute, and perhaps put a few points in willpower to have a bit of extra stamina for your active or sustained abilities. The dexterity score I would recommend is 36, because it's the requirement for the dual weapon mastery passive. Obviously, a rogue doesn't care about using full-sized weapons since he will want to use daggers, but the passive also reduces the stamina costs for all dual weapon talents, and I think that that is useful enough to get those extra points in dexterity. Plus, more dexterity means a higher defense, and that can come in handy if Zevran draws a little bit of unwanted aggression due to doing too much damage. I would also recommend a score of about 20 willpower. That should be enough for Zevran to be able to use his talents. If you are playing the vanilla game, you need a score of 20 strength to be able to equip the highest tier light armors. If you are using the Dexterity Light Armor mod, then you don't need to put any points in Strength. When you recruit him, Zevran will have a decent amount of points invested in Strength already, so you don't have to put a lot of points in there to get him up to 20 anyway. Everything else should go into Cunning, as it will absolutely increase Zevran's damage a lot. 
I recommend you max out the combat training skill as always so that you can have access to tier 4 class and weapon talents. Master combat training also offers a bonus of plus 1 armor and plus 4 to attack. Afterwards, if you want to be able to craft the tier 4 poisons and grenades, you can get master poison making. As I've mentioned, I don't generally recommend it because you will have money struggles already uh, in the game from the fact that a lot of the best items in the game are very expensive, and without cheats or exploits, there is a limited amount of money you can earn. Other than combat training, you will know from my other videos that I recommend maxing out survival for the bonuses to nature resistance. However, this time I would recommend putting some points in stealing if you want to use the skill to make some money, because Zevron is already going to want to have a lot of points in cunning, and cunning helps out your stealing skill, so I find that it's much better to use stealing on Zevron than on Liliana. Of course, the same problems related to stealing remain. You can only steal from an NPC once in an area, or possibly a few times based on their reappearance in a different area or at a different time. And there are a few special items that can be looted from a handful of NPCs, but otherwise, what you steal from most NPCs is generally just a little bit of money or a consumable item. If you aren't interested in stealing, then just go for survival, and after you max it out, you can put points into whatever other skill you would like. Severin is a rogue, so he gets a skill point every two levels, so you will have a lot more points to play around with. I recommend you max out Zevron's assassin tree, as all three passives are extremely useful. I've already mentioned exploit weakness, but Lacerate and Feast of the Fallen are also amazing. Lacerate makes it so that whenever a backstab deals at least 10 damage, this should be fairly easy to do with some decent daggers, the target takes some bleeding damage over time. It's just some extra damage from your backstabs over time, which is great. Feast of the Fallen is a passive similar to the Warrior's Deathblow. It's not as good as Deathblow because it only restores stamina to the rogue when they kill an opponent with a backstab specifically. However, it is the whole point of a dual-wielding assassin to use backstabs, so Zevran will likely kill some enemies with backstabs. From the rogue tree, these are some good talents that you should get for Zevran. Combat movement allows for a wider angle from which backstabs work. This is very useful so that you don't have to position Zevran too precisely to be able to backstab an enemy. Coup de grace is something that I consider to be an essential talent for this build since it will make Zevron inflict automatic backstabs against stunned or paralyzed targets. The lock picking or deft hands tree is in my opinion really important to max out on a rogue, since you want to be able to unlock all doors and chests on your adventures for the extra loot and experience. This chain of talents also helps rogues disarm traps, and the cunning score of the character contributes to both lock picking and disarming, and Zevron already wants to have a high cunning score, so he should be really good at this. From the dual weapon tree, I recommend maxing out the whole first row, you could, if you really wanted to, stop a dual weapon expert, since rogues don't care about using full-sized weapons, but as I already mentioned, I think the extra dexterity is useful, and the stamina cost reduction of dual weapon talents is also significant. From the dual striking tree, I recommend getting Riposte and Cripple. You will have to unlock dual striking first to get them, and Zevran doesn't need to use dual striking because it stops you from critting, but I think it's worth getting this point. Riposte very often manages to stun enemies, meaning that afterwards Zevron can backstab them if he has Coup de Grasse unlocked, or move around to their back to backstab them the old-fashioned way if he doesn't have Coup de Grasse. Cripple is another good talent that is an autocrit if it hits, and it gives penalties of minus 10 to attack and defense, as well as minus 40% movement speed to the target unless it passes a physical resistance check. You may find that enemies resist the penalties, but I still think it's a useful talent to have due to being an autocrit. Otherwise, I've already discussed which of Zevran's possible starting talents are good, and if you recruit him earlier, you know which ones to unlock from those. Zevran already starts with one specialization, the Assassin. For his second specialization, I highly recommend the Duelist. It gives Zevran a bonus of plus 2 dexterity and plus 1 damage, but more important are the Duelist talents. Dueling is a cheap sustained ability that gives a bonus of plus 10 to attack, as well as to defense if you have the keen defense passive. Bonuses to attack are wonderful since you will be more likely to hit your targets, and defense is always a great stat to improve to make your rogue harder to hit. Upset Balance is not necessarily the most useful talent. It imposes penalties to movement speed and defense to the target unless it passes a physical resistance check. Personally, I don't use Upset Balance very much, but it is required to unlock the next two talents. Keen Defense is a great passive, offering a bonus of plus 10 to defense to the dueling sustained, as I mentioned. And finally, Pinpoint Strike is the star of the show. 
Using this talent on an enemy makes it so that all of your hits are automatical critical strikes for the next 15 seconds on that target. This is amazing to use on an elite or a boss or any enemy that is going to take a longer time to kill because they have high armor or a lot of HP or both. It does have a very long cooldown, so you will want to ensure that you only use this on a really high value target. First off, please remember that I only recommend gear that you can use for at least a good portion of the game. Thus, you won't usually see me recommending an item that you only receive during or after the landsmeet portion of the game. Occasionally, I have forgotten how late an item is acquired and I did include it on my list, but I generally don't do that. I also don't recommend items that are very difficult to acquire, either because they are a rare drop or because the side quest they are involved in is difficult or annoying to complete. Thus, if you don't see me recommending an item you think is powerful, it is most likely due to one of these factors that I haven't recommended it. I did not forget to mention it. In terms of weapons, Zevron is only interested in daggers. You want him to attack quickly and make use of the high armor penetration that daggers have to deal lots of damage to enemies. As mentioned in the starting gear section, the crow dagger Zevran has is a good early game dagger, and I believe it may even have a rune slot based on the level Zevran is when you recruit him. You can also get one if you kill Master Ignatio in the Gnawed Noble Tavern in Denrim. You can purchase one from Cesar in Denrim from his regular stock, or from Alamar's Emporium in Dustown in Orzmar. Another good early game dagger is Olaf's Prized Cheese Knife, a DLC dagger with two rune slots that has a plus one to armor penetration, which you can find in Hanleith Village. I recommend using this until you find something better. The Edge is a DLC dagger that has plus five to damage, plus three percent critical strike chance, and plus four to attack, as well as two rune slots. As far as raw damage is concerned, the Edge is the highest damage dagger and it is comparable to high tier longswords since it has a total of 11 damage. In my opinion, you can use the edge for the whole game and it will serve you well. If you do replace it, I recommend replacing it with a dagger that has a third rune slot. One of my favorite daggers is the Dead Taig Shanker. It is found in the DLC area Kadash Taig after you finish Dwarven Quest and have Shale. It has plus 5 to cunning, plus 0.5 armor penetration, plus 6 to attack, it interrupts spellcasting, and it has two rune slots. Another good dagger is Thorn of the Dead Gods. This dagger has three tiers, tier 2, tier 3, and tier 6. Obviously, the tier 6 dagger is the best with a bonus of plus 3 to damage and plus 3 to armor penetration, and it can be found in a chest after locating the Drifter's Cache in the Deep Roads. The tier 2 dagger is a decent early game dagger with its plus 2 damage and plus 2 armor penetration that can be purchased from Barlin in the Lothering Tavern. The tier 3 dagger has the worst bonuses, only plus 1 to damage and plus 1 to armor penetration, and you can only steal it from Lord Anwar Dace, so I don't recommend it. Finally, the Rose's Thorn is an incredibly expensive dagger sold by Garen in the Orzammar Commons. It's really good. Plus 2 to dexterity, combat health regeneration, plus 3 to damage, plus 5% melee critical chance, and plus 30% critical or backstab damage, and 3 rune slots. Yes, it is incredibly powerful, but it does also require you to have 148 gold pieces, so it's up to you to decide whether you want to spend this gold for a dagger for Zevron, or if you want to prioritize other expensive items more than this. In terms of armor, you likely want to just use light armor on Zevron since you don't want to invest too many or any points in strength. The best light chest pieces are always going to be the same. Battle Dress of the Provocateur is a DLC item you can unlock by completing an achievement in the Liliana Song DLC. It's the best light chest piece in my opinion, with plus 4 to dexterity, plus 5 armor, plus 15% chance to dodge, combat stamina regeneration, and plus 50 to stamina. The Felon's Coat is sold by Heren in Denerim after three main quests have been completed. It's second best with plus 6 to dexterity, plus 9 to defense, plus 4 armor, stamina regeneration in combat, and plus 15 physical resistance. I prefer the Battle Dress due to the dodge chance, but if you don't have it unlocked, the Felon's Coat is the best base game chest piece. Shadow of the Empire is a decent chest piece, giving you plus 2 strength and plus 2 dexterity, as well as some stamina regeneration in combat. It's cheaper than the Felon's Coat and also more readily available. You can buy it from Legnar in the Orzammar Commons. Wade's Superior Drakeskin set is also a decent light armor set. If you use all the pieces, it offers plus 4 dexterity, plus 70% fire resistance, and the set bonuses are minus 10% to fatigue and plus 5 to defense. Early in the game, if you would like to upgrade Zevran's armor before you get either Shadow of the Empire or the Felon's Coat or Wade's armor, or if you're already using these chess pieces on other characters, then you could just get Zevran a Dalish armor set. 
You can purchase it from Varathorn in the Dalish camp, or find various Dalish armor pieces as random loot in the Brazilian forest. You may also have a Dalish armor set already if your warden is a Dalish elf. It gives plus 2 dexterity, plus 3 defense, and the set bonus is another plus 5 to defense. If you aren't using a full set of armor, here are some good gloves and boots. For gloves, generally speaking, you're interested in critical chance or melee critical chance, armor penetration, and critical and backstab damage. I recommend going for armor penetration and critical and backstab damage. You'll be able to turn most of your hits into backstabs or crits with this build, so I don't see the reason to improve crit chance by the usually quite low number you can find on gear. The angled strikers are decent for the early game, offering plus 5% to critical or backstab damage, and can be purchased from Bodan in the party camp. Personally, I don't buy them because you'll likely want to switch them out for something better, but I mention them nonetheless. The backhands are much better than the angled strikers, offering plus 10% to critical or backstab damage. They can be purchased from Alamar's Emporium in the Dustdown district of Orzammar. If you're really interested in increasing your critical chance, then the pushback strikers are the best gloves in this respect, offering plus 5% to melee critical chance. You can loot these from Jarvia in the Karta hideout in Orzammar. My two favorite pairs of gloves for Zevran, though, are the Kunari Siege Gauntlets and the Red Jenny Seekers. The Kunari Siege Gauntlets give plus 1.5 armor penetration and can be looted from the High Dragon during the Urn of Sacred Ashes quest, and the Red Jenny Seekers give plus 15% critical and backstab damage and are obtained after completing the Trial of Crows questline given to you by Master Ignatio in the Denerim Tavern. You can also use the Dalish Gloves or Wade Superior Drakeskin Gloves for cheaper alternatives that still have some kind of useful bonus. For boots, my personal favorites are the Lion's Paw, which are a DLC item that gives plus 1 armor, plus 10% chance to dodge, and plus 10% chance to avoid missile attacks. The Bard's Dancing Shoes offer plus 6 to defense and reduce hostility, though the hostility reduction isn't implemented in the base game, and you need to use the Dane's Fixes mod in order to make it work. The shoes are purchasable from Bodan in the party camp. The Imperial Weavers give plus 10% chance to dodge and are also purchasable from Bodan in the party camp. In terms of helmets, the best in slot for Zevran is the Quicksilver Arming Cap, because it gives a bonus of plus 2 to cunning, and this can be purchased from Legnar in the Orzammar Commons. Other than that, you can use pretty much any other light helmet, or even the contested Helm of Honleith if you want Zevran to have it for some reason. Moving on to accessories. As always, I usually don't recommend the highly contested items, Cinch of Skillful Maneuvering, Andrew's Blessing Belts, the Spell Ward and High Regard of House Dace Amulets, and the Life Giver, Key to the City, and Ring of Ages Rings. I will sometimes mention one or two of these that would particularly fit the build, but otherwise it is up to you whether you want to equip these on Zevran or any other character, whether you can purchase the expensive ones, and whether you have the achievement-related ones unlocked or not. Know that this build will not fall apart if you don't use the fanciest, most expensive gear. That said, let's talk belts. Zevran's starting belt, Mixed Metal Rounds, gives him plus 2 to dexterity, and as I said, it's a perfectly fine belt to use for the whole game if you want to. The Cinch of Skillful Maneuvering is good on pretty much everyone due to its plus 1 to all attributes, plus 10% spell resistance, and plus 10% chance to dodge. However, if you want to replace Zevron's Mixed Metal Rounds, I personally recommend the Guildmaster's Belt. It is a DLC item that gives plus 3 to cunning and plus 5% chance to dodge. Since Zevron cares more about cunning than dexterity with his assassin build, this belt will serve him better than his starting one. If for some reason you don't have either of these two alternatives but still want to replace Zevron's starting belt, another decent option could be the Sword Belt, which gives plus 1 to armor penetration and can be purchased from Gorum and Denerim. Next up, Amulets. Most amulets are quite defensive in their stats, however one amulet does stand out as the best in slot for Zevran, and it is one of those contested items, the High Regard of House Dace. This is a DLC item that you only get by earning a difficult achievement from the Golems of Amgarak DLC, but it truly offers amazing stats, especially for Zevran. Plus 6 cunning, plus 7% melee crit chance, combat stamina regeneration, plus 50 stamina, and plus 30% chance to avoid missile attacks. You really can't beat this. However, if you don't have it or don't want to use it, you could use one of the following. Pearl of the Anointed is a DLC item that gives plus one to all attributes. I think this is a great amulet when you don't really need something specific on a character because it's a little bit of everything. The Mark of Vigilance DLC item offers defense, spell resistance, and mental resistance. 
And finally, the Magister's Shield Amulet is found in the deserted building in Denerim, and it is slightly better than the Mark of Vigilance, having bonuses to defense, spell resistance, and defense against missiles. Finally, rings. The best ring you can give Zevron is the Wicked Oath. This is a DLC item that offers plus 10% critical and backstab damage, plus 1 armor penetration, and extra combat stamina regeneration. This is a ring that most melee damagers want, so you'll have to choose whether Zevron or another melee damager gets it, but generally speaking, I only recommend you have one melee damager in your party anyway. The Dusk Ring gives plus 3 to cunning and minus 1 to strength, and can be found in the West Brazilian Forest. I like this ring on Zevron because the bonuses to cunning do wonders for Zevron's damage, and a plus 3 to cunning is something that no other ring can provide. The Lucky Stone is a DLC item that is pretty good because it gives plus 1 to all attributes, of course, if we're talking about all attributes, then Key to the City would be better here, because it gives plus 2, but pretty much every character will be happy to use Key to the City, so the Lucky Stone is a good enough alternative. If you are using Dane's Fixes, then a good secondary ring I can recommend is the Dalish Promise Ring, a DLC item that gives extra combat health regeneration, plus 15% to healing received, and reduced hostility. Of course, the second and third properties aren't working in the base game, so I only recommend this ring if you are using Dane's fixes to properly implement these missing properties. There is also a special mini category I will be mentioning, which is runes. This is because Zevran can really benefit from paralyzed runes to make his attacks have a chance to paralyze foes, and once paralyzed, he can inflict backstabs on them with coup de grace. So I am recommending at least one paralyzed rune in each dagger, though you can use more if you want to have a higher chance to paralyze them. Elemental damage runes are also a good secondary choice, particularly lightning and fire. Lightning is good against creatures that are resistant to fire, and fire is good against Darkspawn, Undead, and Sylvans. Darkspawn and Undead are plentiful in the game, so I do highly recommend having some extra fire damage either in the form of a rune or the flame weapons enchantment that a mage can have sustained. Zevron is a quick and dangerous dual dagger assassin. Thus, the main idea behind this build is for him to be able to incapacitate foes with his various attacks and abilities so that he can inflict critical strikes upon enemies, do tons of damage, and kill them very fast. So you want to have paralyzed runes in Zevron's daggers so his basic attacks have a chance to paralyze them, as well as use abilities that stun or paralyze enemies like Dirty Fighting and Riposte. You can of course also use the paralysis spells like Paralyze, Mass Paralyze, Glyph of Paralysis, or Petrify if you have a mage in your party, stunning spells like Mind Blast, or even freezing spells like Winter's Grasp and Cone of Cold. Once an enemy is incapacitated in this manner, Zevron will then be able to backstab them, either by moving around to their back, or just from any position once he has Coup de Grasse unlocked. As for Zevron himself, I recommend having the Momentum and Dueling Sustains active at all times, and otherwise mainly use auto attacks, or use one of the good dual weapon abilities like Riposte, Dual Weapon Sweep, and Cripple. If you want to use Poisons, something that has a chance to stun would be good here, like the Deathroot Extract, Concentrated Deathroot Extract, the Crow Poison, Concentrated Crow Poison, or Flesh Rot. You will want to use Pinpoint Strike on an Elite or a boss, but before you do that, you should check for enemy spellcasters and quickly take those out first. I recommend having at least one tank in your party to keep most of the aggression off of Zevron while he backstabs everyone to death. And having a mage is always useful both for healing your allies as well as, in this case, incapacitating enemies with stun, paralyze, or freeze effects that Zevron can take advantage of. In conclusion, Zevron is an assassin rogue who can deal tons of damage really fast if you build him right to backstab all of your foes skillfully. I will mention that having a melee rogue like Zevron means you will have to either micromanage him to ensure he goes behind enemies to backstab them, or that you give him and your other companions enough abilities that will incapacitate enemies to ensure he will mostly just backstab him anyway with coup de grace. In the late game, if you have many different incapacitation methods, you'll likely be able to just let Zevron do his thing. I hope you enjoyed this character build guide for Zevron in Dragon Age Origins. If you're looking forward to seeing more of my Dragon Age videos, as well as occasionally some videos on other RPGs, do remember to subscribe and leave a like and comment while you're at it too. This has been B-Tier Mutineer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.